Hey everybody, let's start on uh, part two of the uh, of our fuel tuning series of videos I'm going to be putting out here. So we just discussed uh, startup and uh, fuel modifiers. Uh, now we're going to get into what closed loop and learn is. Um, so the uh, if you click here on the system ICF and click here on closed loop slash learn, uh, populates this window. So there's there's a there's an easy way to look at closed loop versus learn. Closed loop is um, instant changes. So what what that means is the oxygen sensor sees a value, okay, and then it modifies it based off of what we told the computer we wanted for for a value, um, and then inside your system parameters you have options to turn closed loop on and off and learn on and off. So Closed loop is an O2 sensor telling us it's whatever air fuel, and then the ECU knows what we told it we want it to be, and closed loop makes instant changes. Learn is uh, also can be referred to as like a long-term fuel trim. Uh, the easiest way to explain learn is learn has watched closed loop and saw what it's done for a while, and it says, hey, how about I take over a little bit and do a, a little bit of the work here, and, um, and it'll auto populate a table uh, in the fuel ICF to show you the changes that it was making, right? So closed loop is our instant changes and learn is our long-term changes that have been happening via closed loop. So um, depending on, you know, your, your application, uh, there's a couple parameters that definitely need to be addressed immediately. And that is if A, you even want to use the learn table. Some people that tune cars don't like it. Some people that tune cars do like it. Um, and if you are going to use it at what RPM you want it to enter learn. So the RPM that you enter learn and close loop at, right, um, both of these, um, you, can, you can have the computer set to two different RPMs, right? Like this can be set to 2,000, and, uh, and this can be set to 1,000, or whatever RPM you want, right? So um, when we teach our classes, people have asked, uh, you know, why do we, why wouldn't we just turn close loop on at zero RPM, right? Well, there's a couple different reasons. One, um, it depends on how good of O2 resolution you have at low RPM, right? So if you've got a five inch downpipe on a turbo car that's 12 inches long and the O2 sensor is just kind of hanging out in the atmosphere, we definitely do not want to turn it on at low RPM because at low RPM, uh, it's going to get a lot of false readings. So this is one of those things, I made a good video on this uh, about a year, year and a half, maybe two years ago, about what, you know, kind of guiding y'all to what RPM to try to enter closed loop. So um, you scroll back through the videos here and find it, watch that one if you want. Um, but uh, but a, a good rule of thumb is if you, turn, if you fire the car up and your O2 sensor is extremely erratic at idle, you do not want closed loop or learn on at idle right? So this is, um, this global file that we're playing with here is uh, out of my own personal car. This is while it's on pump gas. Um, and this thing uh, it, it is very rough, right? So the, the, the tune-up that's in this thing is very rough because um, it just doesn't have a lot of time on pump gas. It's got a lot more time on methanol. So, um, but this is a, a good example to show you, you know, kind of how all this stuff works. So another thing that's nice that Holly has uh, put in here is a, a minimum coolant temperature for closed loop. So sometimes you don't want closed loop to turn on at, uh, you know, 50 degrees, but you want it to turn on at 130, right? Um, so if you've dialed in your, your startup enrichment and your acceleration enrichment and you like that and all that's good, or I'm sorry, and your fuel modifiers, all that's good, then maybe turn on your closed loop, you know, at a, at a higher temperature, right? So you can also enter or enable TPS to enter closed loop, and you can enable TPS to enter open loop. So if you don't want this thing to do anything at idle, right, when you're not on the throttle, put a minimum TPS, uh, you know, a little bit higher, right? So um, same thing with learn, right? It's got a TPS to enter learn. So what is under here? So what this is is we've got, we've got two different axes, um, and they correspond with the fuel table and what these are is th this is compensation limits so this whole table is compensation limits 
So what that means is if the car is hanging out right here, right, uh, or right here when we're driving down the road, you know, we're at 2,500 RPM, and we're at, uh, you know, five-ish inches of vacuum or something, um, then this is going to only allow us to add or remove 10% right here, okay? Um, so what that, so this right here, you see where it says plus, this is to add fuel, and then here is minus, this is to remove fuel. So it's the same thing all up here. You can't change the scaling in this. Um, this co coincides with, uh, with your fuel table scaling. Um, but you can change the values that are in here. So if you don't want this thing to do anything at all, you could do this and say, hey, I don't want, I don't want closed loop to work until we get to 2,500 RPM, right? Um, that's a good way to shut off closed loop there. Uh, if we don't want closed loop to do anything while we are, you know, on the trans brake, build and boost, it, it doesn't, closed loop alarm doesn't function while it's on the rev limiter, but like on the way to it, we could modify this to be 0%. So, um, it would also be here as well. So closed loop is our Holly take the wheel and save me because my fuel table sucks. And learn is, um, hey, I've been watching what closed loop's been doing for a minute, and I think that we need to do this. So short-term versus long-term fuel trims. Learn parameters have the exact same ability to modify all of these cells and to change, you know, the, uh, the RPM that it enters it at. So there is what the difference is with closed loop and learn. Now, it's all based off of target air fuel ratios that we tell it, okay? So, um, this is a target air fuel ratio table that, uh, that, you know, is following the, again, these scales follow your base fuel table scale, right? So, whatever your base fuel table is scaled to, uh, is what your target air fuel ratio is going to be scaled to this table. So, um, what this is, is uh, an air to fuel ratio. If you don't know what that is, then you probably need to hire uh, somebody to tune the car for you. Um, but um, but if you do and you're, and you're grasping it and you're starting to understand it, then um, we know that every fuel has got a storage value and we know that um, we should have good, you know, we should have a, a solid understanding of, you know, the lower the number, right? Like 11.4 is richer than, uh, aka more fuel, than, uh, you know, 15.5. Uh, I'm not going to get into depth about what I think your target air fuel ratio should be, um, but uh, but this is where you would key them in, right? So what closed loop means, and learn means, is if uh, if you're driving down the road at 2,600 RPM and five inches of vacuum, um, and your target air fuel is 13.4, and the O2 sensor is reporting, let's say, 12.8, that means that the O2 sensor is telling us that the engine is richer than what we actually want. So it swaps over to this right here, and closed loop is going to start doing whatever we allow it. Now, if these parameters are not met, right, if we're at, if we're at too low of an RPM, so we'll just change this, right? If we're at too low of an RPM um, and we have zero in here, it's not going to modify anything. But if we had, say, you know, whatever, 20%, um, that's a, uh, it's going to start allowing it to modify it, right? So, um, if you don't want any modification in an area, just start zeroing it out or make your parameters to enter closed loop, uh, suit what you're after, right? So that's closed loop. It'll make changes for you on the fly. Uh, it'll kind of save you, um, you know, if your, if your fuel tune-up is, is out of whack. Uh, it's also, you know, people can claim that they're the greatest tuner in the world and blah, blah, blah. Uh, the reality of it is, is that nobody can sit here and tell you that we're going to be exactly perfect at 2,600 RPM, 5 inches of vacuum, and 41.8 pounds per hour of fuel. No one's going to hit that. Okay, no one. You can't. You just cannot be absolutely perfect where you would need zero closed loop and zero learn uh, um, uh, modification to be the exact perfect running engine. The whole key to this is to give the engine what it wants. If you feel as if, you know, uh, when you start populating this, these values, um, typically what I like to do is I start a little rich because the engines will run uh, pretty decent rich. And then when you start driving them around, you start leaning them out. And, uh, and you lean them out until they're the happiest, right? So, and then when it comes to making power, um, I kind of go after it the same way. This is only scaled to eight pounds of boost. And the reason being is because uh, this is on pump gas, and um, I do not have a combo that is exactly happy to be making a bunch of power on pump gas. 
So um, this this is just kind of a generic. I slam this together to make sure that the thing would drive around and do okay, um, and it works. It, it works fine, but. Uh, don't take these values, right? So I, I've started going really rich the moment it gets into boost because I don't want this thing to ever be in boost on pump gas. So uh, don't look at this table and go, oh, man, this is terrible. You know, you need to be this, that, and the other. Um, I just started making it rich because I don't want it to ever, I don't ever want it to be up here, right? We don't ever want to make boost. This is strictly to just drive a thing around. So uh, that's why there's so much resolution in um, in the vacuum section of this. So... We understand closed loop now, right? I'm hoping everybody said yes. So, uh, now let's look at learn. So again, learn has watched what closed loop has done for a while and says, hey man, I'm gonna take over and I'm gonna start adding that 5% that, that you were after, that, that whatever our parameters allow, right? And what it does is it'll start to automatically populate this table right here where it says learn table. So, um, here, this is actually the learn table from the car uh, when it was sitting here idling and, and taking throttle and just kind of, you know, foot braking it slowly to see how it responded to load. Um, so my initial guess was pretty close, right? We're off by 0.3, 0.4%. This is after some tinkering and whatnot. Um, but what this is doing is this is telling me that, hey, I'm a little rich in this area, right? So uh, do I want to modify it? Now, sometimes you'll see, you know, sometimes... Uh, we'll, I'll see numbers like this, you know, so it's, it's minus 20%. Well, if we're taking 20% out here, if, if Learn is trying to take 20% out here and we just got done driving the car and the car drove really well, well, then maybe we're just in a bad area um, of, our, of our base fuel map right around here, right? So maybe this is just terrible. So we need to modify our base fuel map. Um, you, can, you can go about doing this uh, a couple different ways. Um, this is... Uh, this button here, transfer learn to base, is uh, has made a lot of people tuners, right? So um, they drive the car, and it and it and it uh, and it, it populates the the map, and then um, then people go out and they race the car, and it and it populates a map, and it says, hey, we need to add fuel here or there, or whatever, and they just kept hitting transfer learn to base, and then what happens is their their fuel map looks like um, a mountain scene, you know what I mean? It's all over the place. So if we look at like the graph. Um, this is a relatively smooth, you know, basic VE table. But when you start transferring learn to base a lot, right, you start doing this a lot, and I'll show you how this works, right? So we're going to pull 20% there, and then what we're going to do is we're going to add 40% here, so it's really dramatic. Um, we hit transfer learn to base. Uh, it's going to populate this window, and it's going to say, do you want to smooth the fuel table with the learned values? What that means is it's going to take this 40% and it's going to smooth it out a few cells around it so it doesn't look like a total mountain. But for this experiment, we're going to do this and say no so you can see the real distinct problem with doing this, right? So let's hit no. Let's go to base fuel. Well, look at that. Now we've got a huge mountain side here, right? And then here we've got a big hole right here. If we look at the graph, um, it's blatantly obvious, right? So so we've got a really, we've got a really ugly fuel table. Um, and to be honest with you, if you had to go through that and do that and you transferred learn to base, there's a good chance that you've got a problem here um, and you've also got a problem here and uh, you probably have that same problem here. So when, when the learn table is telling you that you need to make big wholesale changes to something, um, you know, in, in a certain area, I suggest that you kind of look over the whole map and say, hey, if, this, if, if, if we've got cells here adding 20%, and then cells here adding 20%, and then cells here adding 20%, there's a good chance that the whole map is off by about 20%, right? So instead of transferring learn to base, um, we may want to just clear the table and come in here to our base fuel table and modify, you know, the majority of the, of the table in one shot, right? So, so we can avoid these, these, these cliffs, right? So... Um, Hopefully that makes sense, and hopefully everybody understands, you know, the difference between um, your your uh, learn and your closed loop, how they work, and uh, when to use them and when not to use them. So, all right. Thanks a lot. See you.